there will be a time when you will see a lot of softwares complementing each other a lot of companies building a lot of softwares gamific gamification will not be far off you will see a lot of games coming in from uh, from xbox to uh, the playstations of the world where the kids will get engaged to playing pickleball virtually on their tv sets so i think pickleball will see exactly the same curve not just that because it has the spectatorness it has the you know broadcaster friendly approach to it i feel that there will be a lot more technology that will be built which will elevate the overall pick- pickleball ecosystem so the future is going to be bright Welcome to the future of pickleball. This is the show where we get a chance to talk to the leaders of the industry, the people that are guiding the sport and steering it where it's going to go. Today, I have a wonderfully interesting guest, a little different for my show, Amon Grover. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for having me. You know, one of the things that's sort of interesting is uh, uh, I'm sitting here in the morning on the West Coast of the United States. Where are you and what time is it where I'm talking to you? I'm sitting in India. The time is 9.32 p.m. for me. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Well, it is sort of interesting how our global world of pickleball is starting to bring those of us from all the different continents together, isn't it? Absolutely. This is the perfect timing, and uh, this is the right time to be in the in the space. Yeah, it's sort of interesting. I want to tell you all watching, I met Aman uh, for the first time uh, in Princeton, New Jersey, back in May. There was a very, uh, very high-level Pickleball Minds conference of business leaders from mostly around the United States, but then there were a number of internationals that came in. Aman was one of them. And Aman was the lead speaker on technology and what's coming in the sport of technology. And that's what we want to talk to him about today. Aman, give me a little bit of a background as to what you do in your world of technology and how it affects pickleball. Very interestingly, uh, besides technology, uh, I'll talk about technology in a brief period, but I, I've actually started playing table tennis back in the days during my school days. I picked up theater afterwards and then I picked up technology. So I kind of you know, John, of various hats in my in my overall career, I come from about 18 plus years of, uh, years of experience in technology. I have been in the pickleball arena for almost two years. I saw a couple of people playing in my locality and I got hooked. And I thought this is very interesting as a game, as a sport. Uh, barring the noise that was coming in, I was hooked to the, to the game. And uh, I went down, I played some knocks and I beat them hands down. And I, I never looked back from there on. So I started playing pickleball and then technology happened. Uh, I started speaking with a couple of people from the industry and uh, I saw there were gaps uh, in terms of how technology can elevate the experience. And that is why, what I bring to the table right now, Paul. You know, and, and interestingly, uh, and of course, I've had, I've had the preview of having seen him on speak already on the subject. But take our listeners into a little bit of what your thoughts and ideas are on what technology can and will bring to enhance the sport and enhance the player experience. Absolutely. Pickleball has been in the industry for since 1965. It's been, it's been the longest of the times that the sport has been played. It's the most interesting participative sport that is ever created, I would say, because the whole family comes together and play the sport. The numbers are really promising, not just the U.S. I think globally, uh, every every country is elevating this into this particular sport. Where technology bridges the gap is that the social media element and the player persona element where you create heroes out of the pro players, that's what technology brings to you. That's what technology brings to your home, in, into your TV screens, into your broadcastings. You know, you see any other sport like football, you see, uh, you know, cricket being popular in India. Technology has really evolved and elevated the overall experience of that particular sport. 
So it is not, not going to be any different for pickleball as well, Paul. And now that really kind of segues us into um, you have a, an immersive pickleball player experience called Fans Play. Tell us about that. Tom was born out of a cafe. You know, we, we both were looking at, my, me and my CEO were looking at doing something in technology in pickleball. We've been playing for quite some time. He plays for India. You know, I've been playing uh, recreational. I've played 35 plus. So we thought that what could be something that we can give to the audience, to the players, to the community, which can elevate the overall experience? We came up with Fans Play. Fans Play is the immersive pickleball fantasy game app which actually lets you play that game virtually. So a normal a tournament happening across the globe, you can watch that tournament onto fans play virtually from anywhere in the world. So very interestingly, when we launched the app in India, in Mumbai, I saw people from China, I saw people from Russia, I saw people from different parts of the globe hooking onto fans play and looking at what's happening in this side of town. So that's fans play for you. It actually brings in the experience that you you were never having earlier when you were playing pickleball. You know, that's really interesting. So much of what I do in the sport is I end up talking about the different demographics and how this enormously immersive or inclusive sport that we've got, what is the, what's the core market or what, who's the group that you think is sort of your sweet spot for fans play? Well, I think everyone who's actually playing pickleball, the pro player, they don't really have anywhere to go where they can call, uh, you know, they can call out their profiles. So their user personas stay on fan space. So we are creating heroes out of the actual pro players who are playing the circuit. Not just that, you know, people who are actually playing other racket sports, table tennis, badminton, lawn tennis, you know, they, they come to the platform, they see the game, they see the game actually happening and they get hooked to, you know, converting themselves to playing pickleball over the longer run. So... Fans Play is actually bri bridging that gap. It's like the fan app into your pocket. You know, you can pop it up. It will notify you every time a tournament is going live. Uh, and every time you're on Fans Play as a fan, you, get, you can create your dream team and win big on the platform. So that's the Fans Play app for you. So everybody who's out there, who's a player, who's not even a player, is a target audience for Fans Play. And so now on your, on your market space that you're out there, um, how how does a team get formed? Can I form a team? Do I follow a team? Where does that come from? Well, absolutely. Every single time, if you're a fans play follower, if you're a fans play user, every time a tournament goes live, you get notified to create your own team. Every tournament has an event spread inside it. An event has a team stacking. So basically, a team is a composition of multiple players. So consider that you have eight teams playing a team event and every team has six players each, you can create a team out of a pool of 42 pro players. You can create four players as team. They could be any four players out of the total stack and every single player has a cost attached to it. So as of now, fans play is absolutely free to play. We are giving away points for you to actually come onto the platform, create your team using those points. So it's that easy. Oh, fun. You know, I, uh, I had looked uh, and uh, not the typical... Um, games player, shall we say, but I've begun to watch what you're doing and it's really interesting. You know, one of the things that you talked about when we were in Princeton was you talked about some other strategies and some other involvements that you saw yourself becoming involved in. Tell us about that. Just digressing a little bit on the fans play side of it, how fans play was born. This was the engagement side of things on fans play, but we, when we were actually doing and playing a lot of tournaments in India, we saw that there was no tournament software which was actually capturing live scoring, which means that the referee at the side is capturing a score on a tablet or a, or, a, or a phone, and that gets updated to every single person who's playing the tournament or otherwise. That is also what Fans Play does for you. Fans Play is not just live and immersive. It actually gives you live leaderboard and scoring in your pocket every time a tournament is happening. So that's the Fans Play side of the story. Now, I'm also involved in building some more technology, which is I'm kind of looking at the AI space. You know, we, we all know about Swing Vision. Swing Vision has been in the industry for quite some time for tennis. You know, they, they've been trying to solve a problem. What we are trying to solve is that we are trying to create a companion app which actually creates your journey as a performance parameter on the app itself. So using an iPhone, you can mount the iPhone, create a camera, a role or, or a video of your, uh, you know, or your gameplay, 
which gives you live statistics of how you have performed. So it gives you a heat map. It gives you a forehand shot, backhand shot, ball speed, trajectory, in out calling, everything that you that you name it, we have it. So we are building that technology as well. And you know, who knows that fans play would actually in, evolve using that technology because we can you know plug in those two technologies and create those fantasy personas and and point system based on these complementing technologies. So there are there are a lot of things in this space, Paul. Um, it's a very interesting topic. I can I can talk for hours in this, but uh, th- th- those are the few things that I thought that this would be very interesting to talk about right now. Uh, you're exactly right. And I'm going to just take a brief moment. If you're watching this and you enjoy it, hit the like button, subscribe to this show, tap the notification button, and you'll hear about these guests as they come on, when they come on. Let's jump back into this. So you're exactly right about it. And one of the things that I wanted to do when getting you on the show was to begin to introduce the world to these ideas and these concepts, because I don't hear about it being talked about on, on the street in my general day-to-day pickleball things. And yet when I heard you in Pickleball Minds and got to looking into what you're doing, tell me a little more about how will the player, so the average pickleball player that's enjoying their pickleball, they're, they're playing in their local regional areas, how will they begin to see technology uh, improving their uh, their experience in pickleball? Interesting question. So I think there are a couple of rating systems already existing, Duper being one, UTR being the second. So, you know, if a player is playing professionally, they are improving on their duper ratings, right? That's the that's the parameter that they actually look into. But while they are playing across the tournaments, what is that one application which is capturing their whole, the whole ecosystem, their whole experience of how they have performed? That is what fans play is bringing in their pockets, you know? So every time you go out and play Paul, <laughs> I am going to capture 6,000 data points across different fantasy scorings when you go out and play a single tournament, which means that every second time you go out and play, I can exactly tell you what you did wrong and what you did right in the last tournament you played. So over a period of timeline of 10 events or 10 tournaments, you would be a better player. So you're not just improving your rating, which is your duper or UTR, you're also improving on your game strategy. And that just that doesn't really stop for your gameplay. You can also look at other players who are stacking up against you. So classic example, if you're playing against Megan Fudge, for example, you will see Megan's data onto the platform where she has performed in a certain fashion playing the last 10, 12 tournaments. And you can be well prepared for the next time that you go against her. So there, there is a lot of possibilities. This is the overall experience engagement, but it's also bringing in the performance side of things as an athlete on fans play. Now, when, when you talk about players like Megan, one of the top women players in the game, um, how will fans play engage or fit into the ecosystem of overall pickleball with whether it's the PPA, APP, MLP? How will that all come together? It actually um, creates the overall experience, which means that the live scoring, the leaderboard, which is not existing on any other tournament softwares, or anywhere in the world, not even the broadcasters are giving it away, fans play is giving that. That's, that solves one part of the problem statement, which brings in the engagement level at the site when people are playing it. Very interestingly, Megan was my first pro player, my MVP on fans play, who won the tournament in Mumbai. That's how I launched fans play. She, she is the face of fans play, so to speak. So... That's why I can I can talk about Megan and Ryler because you know they were the face of fans play when fans play was launched. So elevating the experience through live scoring, through leaderboard, through the fan engagement, through point system, through scoring are various, you know, various various ways of fans play engaging it. But it doesn't really stop there, Paul. What we are now trying to achieve, Paul, is that we are trying to automate the whole ecosystem, automate the experience. So we have signed up with Minor League Pickleball, which is Doom Duper minor league pickleball recently with 200 events across the U.S. And what we are doing is that we are automating the algorithm of fans play, which means that we will collate the duper rating of any pro player. And based on that duper rating, we are going to define the predictability analysis, which means that what are the odds and under of you performing or underperforming? So your overperformance and underperformance is all captured on fans play and rewarded accordingly. 
you know, so if you're overperforming, you're rewarded accordingly. If you're underperforming, then you're, you, get, you, you pay heavy penalty in terms of points, of course. So that increases the elevation amongst every single player there is. And, and that sounds to me like that could possibly factor into how gambling and, and uh, uh, wagering could be affected on the games. Will you be involved with that at all? You never know, Paul. We are trying to generate data. We are trying to generate critical mass right now. I think the intent and the idea is to make it a habit that people people create their teams on Fansplay. People come to Fansplay to see what's coming next in their town, in their city. Once that happens, once we have the critical mass happening, we will start monetizing it. It's a very interesting game to play. Uh, you know, once that goes in, you know, we could we could really be getting into that space as well, which you spoke about. Yes. Hi. I want to tell you guys about one of the best additions I've got to my game, and it's not another paddle. It's not another shirt, it's my Selkirk Tour Bag. Selkirk bags are designed with tremendous intent. They're to help you organize, to keep things that you need with you where you can get at them whenever you want them. The beauty of the Selkirk bags is they're designed by a company that really thinks first, last, and always about pickleball. They've created a series of bags at all kinds of price points that are tremendously well-designed, and frankly, they look really good. Look at the Selkirk bags, not only for what you do courtside, I use my tour bag as my travel bag when I'm going around the country. Selkirk will help you have the best experience you can have. Enjoy it. Thanks so much. You can find all the bags on Selkirk.com's website. You know, something that uh, that I think is very interesting, and I know you're very involved and we're, we're you just in Dubai, uh, uh, in the Middle East here recently with the launch of the, the World Pickleball Rankings and the World Pickleball Tour. Tell us a little bit about what's to come on that. World Pickleball Ranking, which is the PWR Pickleball World Series and Rankings, it's a very, very unique proposition. It's a very unique concept with six tours across the globe, every single tour with a hefty price sum of money with an invite-only tour. All the pro players across the world will be a part of a certain tour when we take that tour across the globe. We launched that tour in GCC in Dubai. We are doing that first launch there. There will be India tours planned, and then there will be feeder tours, which will actually feed into that particular main tour that we call it the Grand Slams of, of Pickleball, so to speak. So that format is very interesting. Um, there are different gameplays in terms of formats that we are trying to achieve here, which has not been done ever before since 1965. So it is going to elevate the whole player persona and the experience of how pickleball is played, not just played, but consumed globally. From broadcaster perspective, from spectator perspective, we are backed by the best of the world's, uh, you know, number one organization, which is the Times Group in India, which is the broadcasters. We are backed by them. So they are backing up pickleball heavily and they are, they are putting, uh, you know, their stakes on it. So... That's what we're trying to build. You know, I, this is the thing that excites me so much about what's happening in pickleball and where this global direction is going. I was in Europe earlier this summer talking with people there about what they see happening. Um, I know that we're all kind of, uh, we all, many of us are beginning to lean towards an event that's going to be in Dubai in January in the Pickleball Minds Conference. You're going to be at that, I'm sure. Yes? Wait, I can see. Yeah, okay. I, I, I was sure you were, and uh, what I'm what I want to be thinking about is is how do we as a sport benefit from all of these global and international organizations like the Times Group in India coming into it? Um, we're hearing that there's Middle East interest in pickleball. That the world seems to be yes. understanding that it's a fabulous game for their population, and it's interesting right. and social and fun. How does that yeah. all start to come together with the World Pickleball Tour? Yeah. So I think every single country, every single organization in the country is coming together to be a part of the ecosystem. China is no, not far. You know, China is picking up pickleball in a massive way. They are, they are building infrastructure. They're building the players. Megan and Ryla were there for a seven-day camp. It was a very well-received camp across China. So uh, not just China, I would say, you know, you rightly said Dubai, where Padel is played very heavily. Pickleball is really picking up now. 
So in terms of answering your question, every single tour that is going to go live on the World Series, the six tours that we spoke about, they will be in in some part of the world, you know. So we start with Dubai. There'll be a couple of them in the U.S. There'll be one in India. They, there'll be one in China. So and Canada as well, which is included. So what what I'm trying to say, Paul, is that because of the tour, because of the ranking system, because of the elevation of the whole experience that you're trying to bring together, the fraternity, which is the organizations of repute, which are working towards elevating all of their players' experiences, are coming together. It is going to be a unified body, which is actually working towards creating the ecosystem that is needed, which is which we call the beautiful sport, the spectator sport that we, that we call pickleball. And it, I, I love it when my guests talk about unification and unity in the sport, because goodness knows we need more of that. Um, do you have any thoughts or ideas on how you see the Olympic development or the possibilities of Olympic development for pickleball as we become more unified? Well, I think most of the countries who are actually working and targeting towards the Olympic story, they are working towards the uh, the actual paperwork side of things. That's why the unification is really important. These conversations about technological advancement, elevation of player experience, and all those things go hand in hand in terms of elevating the whole experience of that sport. Because when when Olympic body would look at this particular sport, they would look at every single minute detail in terms of what we have brought together, not just the player community, also the softwares, also also how this sport is being played in every single country, the tours, the the state tournaments, the national tournaments, and all of those things, you know. So I think it's all happening. I, I think there are positive conversations that are happening across the globe. I've been fortunate to be a part of the ecosystem, being a part of those kind of conversations, which are developing into positivity, I would say, Paul. That's exciting to hear. You know, something that I want to do is is I want to kind of give you an opportunity to sort of lay out your thoughts and ideas. Typically, I like to ask my guests, as we look down the road, two, three, four years in the pickleball space, what do you see as a technologist and somebody that really is in the idea of creating and innovating things? Pickleball see a lot of population playing it. Pickleball see a lot of population loving the sport. Even people who play it for the very first time, they get hooked to it. So it has a recreational concept. It has a professional concept. It has an intermediate and a lot of different variations and variety, the flavors that we talk about. The best part is that it's no age barred. Every single person, you know, no matter what age group, he or she can play pickleball with any any person with, with other age groups. So a, a grandfather can play with a grandkid and still enjoy that same sport with the same vigor. In terms of elevation of technology, I feel there is a lot of scope. There's a lot of growth that still needs to come in pickleball. Right from elevating right at the start of the tournament software where the pickleball is, you know, being consumed as you know, one of the key, key areas where a lot of people are focusing, fan engagement using fans play or any other application that there is, AI component of building the professional side of it, performance and, uh, you know, parameters. There are a couple of other applications that I've, I've seen recently, AM7 being one, which is actually giving you, uh, you know, the exercise plans, how to actually warm up nice and, you know, how to uh, have a nice diet and things like that for you to be a professional athlete. So there is a full-blown ecosystem that is waiting to unfold. I think the day is not going to be far where blockchain will come in heavily, where metaverse will come in heavily, where you'll see a lot of gamification, the actual games being built on pickleball, virtual reality, virtual gamifying, uh, you know, gamified versions of pickleball games being available on, you know, Playstations and, you know, Xboxes where the kids can really enjoy that at their houses without even stepping out. So, I think like any other game that there is, pickleball is not going to be any different. You know, it is going to see every single thing that any other future sport or any other legacy sport has seen so far. You know, you pick up golf, you pick up soccer, pickleball will have all of those technological advancements coming home. That's, that's, my, that's my personal take. In terms of the next three to five years, Paul, I think unification will really take uh, the front seat, I believe, all the organizations, everybody in the world is talking about it. It's the most important buzzword in everyone's, you know, in everyone's dictionary right now because the way things are elevating, the way countries are coming together, the players are building, 
the only approach has to be a new unified approach. So that is going to change. That definitely is going to change. And I'm, I'm really positive that the world leaders, people, people who actually started pickleball, people who are veterans in the space, they are talking positively about it. And they're also embracing technology. They are adopting technology. They are gungo about what technology can bring for them. That is really positive. That is That gives me enthusiasm at this level that it is going to elevate the whole experience. And everyone, it's a playground for every single person to 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 succeed, I would say, Paul, not just not just us. You know, so it's an equal play area for everybody there is to uh, to do whatever that is required to to make it happen. Yeah. You know, it's very exciting for me to hear you talk about that and, and how our sport will continue to evolve to sort of catch up with all of the aspects and characteristics of other sports. One of the things that I think is going to be very, very interesting is is how we see the sport grow in a global sense. And one of the areas that I want to talk to you about a little bit is is things like the the Pickleball Minds Conference that we did in Princeton. When that comes up Mm -hmm. in Dubai, where we're bringing leaders from around the world together in one place, I've got to believe that that's going to be a very positive environment for people like you to network, to meet, to talk, and for people who are hearing this perhaps to say, let's go get face-to-face with Amon and have an opportunity to talk to him. Do you see that factoring into the into the whole future? Oh, absolutely. Uh, when I attended Jersey, you know, uh, with Pickleball Minds as a first conference, I made friends for life. I've been talking to those folks who, uh, you know, I attended the conference with. Not just my panel, Paul, people from across panels, they are in touch with me. We talk often. You know, I, go, I come to the U.S. and I meet them. So I've made families. Aman, I've really enjoyed this. This has been great. And I really like to ask my guests as we get near the end of an interview, what is your vision? What do you see in the sport, particularly from a technology standpoint, that's going to happen in the next two, three or four years how do you see it playing out? If you look at any other sport that has seen the trajectory in terms of how technology has evolved that particular sport, pickleball is not going to be any different. I think the way globally now people are talking about unification, there will be a time when you will see a lot of softwares complementing each other, a lot of companies building a lot of softwares, gamific unification will not be far off. You will see a lot of games coming in from uh, from Xbox to uh, the Playstations of the world where the kids will get engaged to playing pickleball virtually on their TV sets. So I think pickleball will see exactly the same curve. Not just that, because it has the spectatorness, it has the you know broadcaster-friendly approach to it. I feel that there will be a lot more technology that will be built, which will elevate the overall pick- pickleball ecosystem. So the future is going to be bright. That's what I see it. And as a technological person uh, at the age of 41 playing pickleball i see i have found my sweet spot i can play this sport for the rest of my life and create technology on top of what i'm loving so far so i have really converted my hobby into my profession so to speak so now one of the things that i think is going to be sort of interesting i look very forward to being with you in dubai in january what do you see happening perhaps between now and january is it is it moving that quickly well, I think the needle is moving really fast. If you look at China, if you look at other countries which are you know, embracing technology, embracing the pickleball as a game, I think everyone's talking about it. I know for a fact that I know at least 10 people who are building various technologies in pickleball. So come January, we will have more data to talk about. I can share a lot more information in January in Dubai with you which I can't reveal right now because think, it's, it's, it's all in the works. Well, and, and realistically, the, the thing, having being someone who's been involved in the sport for quite a while, it, it's amazing where we talk about pickleball years, things happen pretty fast in this sport. And, and that's where I'm really looking forward to having this opportunity to meet with the global drivers, people from around the world that want to get involved in pickleball and and I think there are a lot of people that don't realize how we're still so much in the emerging stage of the sport. You know, it's been around, it's very exciting in America, but it's it still has such an upward trajectory. It's just remarkable. Dubai will be a fun place to kind of get all of those people together, talk, visit, and get to know each other. Absolutely. I can't wait to be there. Absolutely. I made friends in Jersey. Like I said, I made friends for life. 
uh, I made friends from different panels, and I've been talking to a lot of lot of them, uh, you know, uh, when I visit their country. So it has changed the ecosystem. It has changed the persona in terms of how I perceive, you know, uh, technology and pickleball and the gamification side of it. So Dubai is not going to be any different. I'm waiting for it to unravel. I'm sure. Very good. Aman, thank you very much. This has been wonderful having you on the show. I'll see you in January. Absolutely, Paul. Thanks for having me.